This section is over techniques of differentiation, so we are still going to be working on taking derivatives. But so far, we've been taking derivatives by using the definition, with the limit as h goes to 0 of the difference quotient. Now we're going to learn other ways to differentiate functions rather than by using the definition. And in this section today, they're going to be much shorter, and you're going to wonder why I didn't give you these shortcuts, so to say, in the earlier section. And my response is because I wanted you to figure out how the definition worked in the first place and why it did what it did, and now we're going to start to use the shortcuts. But before I give you those shortcuts, let's actually work through some problems to figure out how these shortcuts were founded. So we're going to be working through some background problems, and then eventually I'm going to just give you what those techniques of differentiation are. And from here on out, unless the homework or exam specifies by using the definition of the derivative, you can use these techniques to derive anything past this point. Okay. So first, let's do one of these background problems that I talked about. Um, we want to find the derivative of the linear function f of x equals 9x minus 22, and we're going to use that by using the definition. Then we're going to find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of the function at the point where x is equal to negative 6. And hopefully that's going to tell us how we could have came up with the answer to part A by using geometric considerations, meaning by looking at the graph without actually doing any calculations in the first place. So since we've done quite a few definitions of the derivative, you should be able to do parts A and B with no problems whatsoever. And hopefully once you get to that part, you can answer part C quite easily. So I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can answer this background question on your own. Okay, let's start with part A. Find the derivative of the linear function f of x equals 9x minus 22. And we're going to do that by using the definition. So the definition is f prime of x equals the limit as h goes to 0 of our difference quotient, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So I'm not going to walk you through all the steps on this video because we've done plenty of these examples before. So I'm basically going to skip all the steps but show you all the work. Okay, so I found the derivative f prime of x is equal to 9. So the work was step 1 here where we figured out what f of x plus h was. Then step 2 over here where we computed the difference quotient and everything canceled out except for our 9. And then step 3 over here was we did the limit as h goes to 0. Well, we didn't have any h values to plug 0 in for, so we just came up with the derivative of our linear function to be f prime of x is equal to 9. So we're going to use that in part b and then for part c. So in part a, we figured out f prime of x is equal to 9. Now we want to find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of this function where our x value equals negative 6. So you hopefully have already done the work to this on your own. And so let's see if your answer matches what I come up with. So in finding the equation of the tangent line, we had to first find our y value by plugging in negative 6 into our original equation. We had to find our slope by plugging negative 6 into our derivative equation. And then we substituted that in for, I use my point slope formula, but you could also use slope intercept formula as well. And notice the answer that we came up with was y equals 9x minus 22. Now, this should look really familiar because that is also the original equation. And so that's what part C is actually asking you. How could we have came up with the answers to parts A and B without doing all of these calculations in the first place? So let's first focus on part A. How could we have came up? 
how could we have came up with the calculation in part A? So what part A asked us to do was to find the derivative. Now remember the derivative gives us lots of things. When we're talking about tangent lines like we did in this problem, the derivative mostly focuses on the slope. Well, because we have a linear function here, our slope is constant. If we would have partnered this up with the y equals mx plus b formula, we could have found out that our slope was constant at 9 throughout all of this problem. So we did not have to use any of the derivative process here. We could have used college algebra information using your linear equation of y equals mx plus b. So that tells us the derivative or the slope of this linear equation at any point is 9. Now, if we wanted to answer how could we have came up with part b without using any calculations, well, if our original equation was a linear equation, so let me graph this real quick. So I have my graph pulled up here. I have graphed my original equation, 9x minus 22. And not only that, but I have the point in question plotted on this. When my x value is equal to negative 6, that gives me this point right here. Well, if I want the equation of my tangent line, I know that it has to intercept this point, and it has to have the same slope as the graph of my original equation. Well, of course my original equation and my graph are going to be the same line because they both have the same slope in all directions. So the only possibility that we have is for our tangent line to be identical to our original equation. And that is because our original equation is a linear function. It has the same rate everywhere, so our tangent line is also going to have the same rate everywhere. So that answers part C here. How could it be obtained from geometric consideration? Well, because we have a linear equation, our tangent line is going to be identical to our original equation. Okay, this gives us one of the foundation pieces to come up with our techniques of differentiation. We're going to use this material to come up with these shortcuts, as I like to call them, but officially they're called techniques. Now, this is not the only foundation piece that we need, so in the next video, I'm going to be working through another type of these problems to see another foundation piece that we're going to use in our differentiation techniques.